All right. So battery died, so we're going to do this again, uh, portion of it. Anyway, so a few things. Let's let's try it again. Being here, we have this sort out. The thing about Ukenagashi in this distance, um, That's what he needs to be worried about. Um, we don't want to block the cut. If you can block the sword, you can cut it. And I went for his, his belly, but really, it could be... As you said, it's right here. You okay? Yep. yep. Right here. What you're doing is going for the arm. And as I come up, if he tries to cut back right now, he can't. Because I'm stopping him with my sword. At that point, like you said, if, you, if I want to grab this, that's great. Because I can, I can keep this in check. He's not moving. Here, this is coming in. Boom, that, there's a cut. Um, when we're doing this, the shuttle, or not only as we call it, he's in the Jodan, and I just, I just did that last cut. And when, when he's coming in and I block, too late. I'm already inside his distance, you know, this thing and cutting and doing this. It shows us, it shows us as a, as a, as a kata that without the timing, go, one, stay right there. Being here, it sh this is teaching us a that this is wrong because this can come back, and b that this will be the next best choice because cutting underneath the shoulder blade will stop this arm from coming. And really, the the next thing is if you are in this distance, this will do it. But really. And if you're going to back away, by backing away here as you, he starts to cut toward me, that I will be out of the range and I can still cut his arm. That's the story and that's the illusion. But the reality is that if he has already done so a couple times, I'm like this and I block his blade and if he cuts back as soon as I start to do something, as soon as he, he, is, he, he he thinks that he missed the cut. He can cut back. I can try to go inside him and, and move in. I'm still too late. I get cut really easily. So blocking the sword really does not make sense. What would make sense is I do this, and if he's stupid enough to come in, so that. Again, the same, same place that where we were. He keeps cutting, that's great, and he starts to cut back to me. He can't cut. I can stop. There it is. So, it really does not make sense. If, if you're doing any kind of um, kata, or if you're doing two-man set, and it, it demands that you either back away or block the sword, you've got to think of it as a lie. Because it is, it's, it, it does not work. If the opponent is so conveniently um, accommodating, so that again we're doing this, and you know he comes in, and I block him, and he stays there, he doesn't do anything. He stays there, nice and easy, so we can start doing this. And that's a story. It, it teaches us about the distance, it teaches us about the place where we're supposed to be, in this situation, where to go, and all that kind of stuff. But if you try to do this, like, you know, some people said, fitting a square peg in the wrong mold, this, this doesn't fit in the reality. This really does not. If you had a chance to deal with this, right, you need to be dealing with this. This person, not this. Um, 
something I said when the, the battery was out. When somebody's shooting at you, you do not deal with bullets. When somebody's shooting at you, you do not deal with guns. When somebody's shooting at you, you're dealing with a person wielding the gun. You don't deal with the sword, you deal with the person. So, when you're looking at kata, and when you're looking at uh, sword work, you can't be thinking, what am I doing against opponent's sword? You gotta be thinking, what am I doing against the opponent, and how am I changing his posture? How am I changing his position? How am I, how am I getting his balance broken so that, that he, can, he can no longer be a threat? Right? That's part of the reason, that's why, right, when, we, when we're doing this, this uh, um, whatever it is that we're doing, if we're, if we're here, one of the really, one of the things that the, um, one of the really things that we want to be working on is, anytime. I just took him. I just took his leg. I didn't cut through it, but by the time he starts to try to step in and cut back, he's not going to be able to do anything. I mean, that's, a, that's an extreme position, but if you don't think like that, right, what we're practicing becomes total bomb. Right? And if you notice, that's, that's this thing that you were worried about, uh, thinking about, and really it's, I'm right here, and when he's coming in, here it is. And he can be thinking that he can try to cut me when he wants. He's not going to get me. Because to him, it looks like I all of a sudden disappeared. Yes. And by the way, that's, that's why we're going up and down and chew down and chew down and open. So you can, you can come down and up. Right? You, I'm like this, and I'm, I'm telling him I'm going to be right here. Then all of a sudden, I'm, I'm down like this. And by the time he thinks that, I, that everything is done, I'm coming up to sit over right so that's one. Next one. Um, can you move the scissor right here? Mm -hmm. uh, facing, facing this bridge. Right, scissor right there. Yeah, right there. And you can put the sword on the side. Yeah. Okay, so kaishaku, right? And what everybody makes mistakes about kaishaku is that they think this is, that that's, that's the target so that you're supposed to be cutting like this, right? In this angle. Wrong. He has a tanto or a sword, and he just cut his uh, belly open. Just, just pretend that you have a sword. And when you cut, stab yourself, boom! He's not going to stay like this. He's going to go like this. And his head's going to drop. Because he's trying to cut. He just cut his belly open. There's no support there. He's going to collapse. And if you notice that a lot of the beheading videos, that a lot of the people are already in this position, the head's, head's down like this, right? Guess what? If you cut like this, guess where the sword is going to go? Into the back of the head, into the, into the, into the skull. All you're going to be doing is just bashing into the person's head. It's not going to do any. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's going to bash it, and, and that big boom, that's, that's what's going to happen. His head is down, right? Notice where it is. This is a straight line right here. That's what you're cutting. So when I'm here, and I won't cut. I'm sorry about hitting you just now. When I'm like this, and when I'm coming in, I'm, I'm doing this in the kaishaku where the head is. And when I come in, it's a straight down cut. Here, from up, above, here, straight down. Between his chin right here and the neck, that much of a width. This is where you're cutting down. Okay, Dave, thank you very much. I appreciate that. So, and I apologize for hitting you in the back of the head. Um, Famous, famous story about Mishima Yukio, Yukio Mishima, uh, the Japanese novel uh, author, 
who committed last seppuku in the uh, 1960s. Um, and uh, he asked his friend to do a kashapu on him, and the guy who tried to cut his head off to take him out of misery bashed his head like 13 times before he could actually cut the, his head off. And, and the, the reason is the guy was hitting him, cutting like this. Cutting like this. So he was cutting the back of the head, not the neck, continuously bashing his head 13 times, and then when the guy just went, went like unconscious because he's been hit in the back of the head so much, then they went and tried to cut his head. Really, the kaishaku from here, here, this is going high so that you can use the position, potential energy high from here, your body moves forward and sword just drops straight down. That's the cut. That's what it does. And when this is happening from the side, it's not downward cut like this, but it's see the forward motion. This motion. Yes. It's not this because if you do this, it's a bash. It's not going to cut. When you're doing a beheading cut, it's this. Sword is going forward. That's how, it's, how you're cutting. That's the story. Now, where does that come in? In the reality of things, right? Because you don't... Yeah, you, it's really important that you learn this, but why are you learning this cut? <laughs> From here. Any questions? I think it's because you look vulnerable in that position. That's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. What it is, though, is that uh, what you're learning is that one handed cut is not a strong cut. That's what you're learning. So you kind of have to figure out what this is. What this is is that when you're coming in, right? And just get that cut nice and slow. That's what we're doing. So if you notice, I have a I have a longer reach. Do it again, goes in voice wall. Mm. I have a longer reach. So I just see that? I, my, my positioning here, I'm sorry, let's do it this way. Here. Part of it right now, because I'm doing this, his line, he, the, he, the line that he can see is this. Right? And I'm going away from this line, see it? And uh, you don't realize this, I'm not really going for his head even though I, I can. What I'm going for on this one, because Remember, one-handed cut does not have a lot of power. Go back a little bit, just a little bit more. Okay. And what I'm going really slow. What I'm looking for, though, is that. And being out of the, on the line. I'm looking for a cut right here. And the reason why we do this, even though I can't really do it against him, but what we're doing there, as we do this and doing this is so that after the cut, what follows? Uh, a uh, thrust sentence. Exactly. So I reach out, get myself out of line, cut, I receive, what for? So I can thrust. Mm, yes, right. That's one of the one of the things. But under and that isn't to say that this is wrong. This isn't. Uh, there are time and place for that, and you have to figure out when that is. And part of that is again when you're doing. I already showed it, but when you when you're here and somebody's coming from here, right? You draw this. Um. In that sense, this 
this kind of cup, drawing, bringing it out, and cutting, um, when the timing is right and when your drawer is in the place, and where you're in a proper distance, and you're cutting the proper target outside of his range, it makes sense. But you have to figure out what that is. That it does make sense. Okay. Yes. Hope that, that clarifies a lot of different things. Oh, one more. Chidori Ashi. Chidori Ashi uh, is a, a footwork. Um, as I said in the email, it's a, a, a type of bird that's a really small bird that, that moves like this. And what it is is that you're making a ultra tiny steps really fast and you can move it to different directions. That's one interpretation. Another interpretation of Chidori Ashi is a, what Japanese call drunkard steps. One like this. Can you tell where I'm going? Hmm. That's Chidori Ashi. You can't tell where, where, where the person is going. So when we're, when we're Engage with each other. You have, he has his sword out. I have my sword out, right? And we're in a ka uh, katachi situation, and we're coming together, going slow. See? <laughs> right now, he doesn't know where I'm going because my footwork is such that I'm going all over the place. He has no idea where my step is, where where I'm going to step. That's chidori yashi. Um, from an Onohai Toyu perspective, and I really shouldn't say that probably, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, part of the Chidori Ashi is in the one of the Onohai Toyu kata, in that he could be over here, uh, going to. Chuda? Chuda. That way, that's the easiest thing. So he's in, he's in Seigan, and I'm in here. Um, and as I come in, right, I come in this way. And he follows my center. I follow him this way. He follows my center. I follow him this way again. He follows my center. I'm getting close. And when I go back over here, he follows my center with the sword. And what's happening right now, without him realizing it, it's like he just opened, my, opened himself up to me. I thrust an attack. That's the basic Chidori Ashi from Monohai to your perspective. And what it is is that you're, you're making a really big motion in the beginning like this as you come in. And he's trying to keep the center line with the sword. But because this is the center line, and my sword is outside of the center line without, without him realizing it, when I go in this way, he's following me. When I go this way. He's following me. Right here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> One, two. Yes. He's his sword following my center right here because I'm like this. If he's following my center right here, when I'm here, the center line is here, but my sword is already inside his center line. He doesn't realize it. So I, all I have to do is come in straight. That's Chidori Ashi too. Little words. Okay, any, so that covers that. Okay.